They say success is failure turned inside out, and that is the essence of this video. If you can understand why clockwork roulette systems fail, then you can turn that inside out and understand what works and why. We should warn you now, although this is probably the most important video we have produced so far, it's likely to be the most tedious, unless of course you're a bit of a math geek. And then for you, this promises to be a feast for your inner nerd. We keep talking about geometric data holding the key and never finding the time to do the topic justice. So, let's put a pin in it. By the end of this video, you will be captivating, and by that we mean boring your own friends, family and anyone else who will listen, with the virtues of geometric data. You can use a geometric data view to record all kinds of information. Today's video, however, is focused on loss levels. With a comprehensive understanding of loss levels, you will be able to evaluate the merits of betting systems, understand when systems are likely to fail, and confidently design your own systems. Before we get into any math behind any system, your first consideration should be the credibility of the system demonstration, the claims being made about the system and from who or where you saw the system. Let's look at some examples of information readily available on YouTube. One channel is dedicated to exposing scammers, a worthy cause, and notably features the demise of past YouTuber, Christopher Mitchell. Mitchell, who often referred to himself as the GOAT, the greatest of all time, charges people large sums of money to join his inner circle with the promise of teaching you his betting techniques. One idiotic system, as the Scam Exposers channel put it, is the twist on the Martingale system that he teaches. This is where he increases the bet size to 24 pockets, but then, instead of doubling the wager on a loss, you have to triple it. We already pointed out the downfalls of a bet of that size in the middle of hidden patterns found in Roulette Part 2, and it's going to get a much bigger slap later in this video. Taking delusions of grandeur to a whole new level, Mitchell of course named this system the Mitchell Gale. With more bounce in his balls than a roulette wheel, Mitchell tried to demonstrate his expertise and increase his credibility by selling his book, The Millionaire Blueprint on Amazon, which you can still buy today. It's a perfect example of a system destined for failure, combined with an even more ludicrous strategy. So it has entered our bookcase on the comedy shelf. It doesn't get to mingle with the big boy books. Mitchell's book is somewhat plausible, utilising the same method that has made bankers, credit card vendors and stockbrokers rich for many years. That method is a financial technique called compounding. Einstein is often attributed to saying, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it earns it, he who doesn't pays it. The millionaire blueprint is therefore based on a mathematically sound concept, which makes it convincing to many. However, the book itself is little more than a child's homework diary in both its content and design. The book claims you can turn $100 into a million dollars within a year. The brilliance of it here is that it's factually correct. If you were able to comply with the daily entry requirements, it would actually only take 312 days to reach the magic million. The concept of the book and starting pages imply it's easy to achieve. You only have to start with $100 and simply make 3% profit per day. You add the day's profit to your bankroll and start the next day with 3% more stake, so the value of the following day's 3% target grows a bit each day. That is the very essence of compounding. So, what's the problem then? Where's the catch? Well, assuming you're going to complete the book using the system the author has put his name to, let's look at it in a bit more detail, using a spreadsheet. It starts off easy making a small amount of dollars per day, and that continues for a month or two. After 12 weeks, assuming you manage to win consistently every day, you will have made just over $1,000. After four months, your daily profit target reaches $100, or pounds, euros, chips, whatever you're working with. By this point, you will have realized you need to raise your starting bet, otherwise your sessions will take forever. Due to the compounding technique stipulated by the strategy, you cannot pocket the profit. Winnings must be reinvested into the stake, so any money you make remains at risk. As you approach the 200-day marker, you'll need to be making over $1,000 a day. Of course, your starting bet will be getting bigger and bigger. At this point, you are risking over $30,000 on a daily basis. Towards the end of the task, you're trying to make ten dollars to $20,000 per day with hundreds of thousands at risk. Let's ignore the fact that way before you get to this level, many casinos would have simply closed your account or perhaps demanded proof of income to comply with anti-money laundering regulations. Your starting bet would need to be at least $100. Even with that, you still only make $50 per win. 
to make 20,000 in a day would require 400 wins. With a 64% win rate, you'll have to play and win for over 600 spins. We've also been ignoring table limits. A 100 chip starting bet means after five losses, your wager will need to be over 24,000 chips, then almost 73,000 if you lose on that spin. There aren't many tables out there that will accommodate those sort of bets. Due to the nature and power of compounding, the last 25 days are of vital importance, accounting for over half of the million dollar goal. It should be obvious now that neither Mitchell nor anyone else has ever completed the book. But the jaw-dropping audacity of the final pages has to be seen to be believed. You will see when you understand geometric loss levels how you could simply look at a system like this and dismiss it in seconds. But let's get back to content on YouTube and remember a good first step to evaluating a roulette system is to consider the integrity of the information you are presented with. If you have watched videos like these and are new to roulette, you may not realise some channels record their demonstrations on play money tables. The first example is well presented and entertaining. However, claiming you have a life-changing system with a clickbait style thumbnail, then demonstrating it on a play money table is completely disingenuous. The software used in these videos is Roulette Royale Grand Casino by Mywavia Studios. The studio publishes a number of games designed to be fun phone apps. While their version of roulette is similar to the casino game, there isn't any time pressure to place your bets. There aren't any table limits either. So betting with play money, you can take risks you wouldn't normally. You can record a demonstration as many times as you wish to make a favourable point or follow a progression until you win, all without ever risking a penny. We are not suggesting these examples are in the league of our earlier scammer. However, they claim to be winning dollars instead of game points, irresponsibly encouraging unsuspecting viewers to try these systems with real money while they earn from YouTube views. We never set out to berate other people's videos, but these get our seal of disapproval for intentionally misleading people. Let's look at another example, which nearly got the same critique, although after further research, we perhaps generously downgraded it to caution. In one video, the presenter reveals he has worked in the casino industry, using his credentials to add some weight to his authority on the subject, while recommending his personal selection of the top five strategies you need to try in 2024. At number five, he puts up a system called the Tripling Gale, which is just a different name for the system that exposed scammer Christopher Mitchell calls the Mitchell Gale. Then his top strategy oddly conflicts with another video which practically begs you not to do it, so one of these channels must be wrong. The example on the left excitedly tells you of the virtues of his top recommendation, the Fibonacci sequence, while offering to hook you up with some affiliate links for casinos where you can try it out. To his credit, and the reason we downgraded our rating to caution, is, in another video, he actually plays the system with real money, although in that video he is less excited and seems nervous. He gives up just over halfway to his target, bearing in mind this is his top recommended system that you need to try. The conflicting video has not been posted by a roulette channel, but probably offers more value than the other examples combined. The other channel presenter, who has obviously tried the Fibonacci method and failed, walks you through a program he has created to test the Fibonacci system. That channel asks for nothing in return, has no affiliation links, and simply demonstrates the system with over a million spins showing a huge number of losses. So, who do you think you should believe? This video gets our seal of approval. If you are thinking, well, I'm never going to play a million spins, then there are some points later in this video that might shock you. So remember to scrutinise everything you watch, and we include our own channel in that. You are probably aware that we have only demonstrated systems so far with tiny stakes, and asked you not to try them with a lot of money, we are nowhere near finished giving you all the information you need yet. Perhaps a golden rule should be, never try systems with more money than the presenter is prepared to. You will see our stakes get higher in future videos, when we have covered a lot more topics in detail. Right, we have a lot to get through. Let's define some terminology, then we're all on the same page. If we say system or systems, then that could refer to a system like the Martingale, or the funneling system we demonstrated in another video. If we say strategy, then that potentially means one or more systems being used over one or more sessions and considers many important aspects such as bankroll management, stake allocation, failure tolerance, and timescales, all as part of a plan to achieve a specific goal. A clockwork system, for example, would be the Martingale system where you predetermine your bet 
let's say red for now, then you simply double your bet value when you lose and reset to your starting bet value when you win. A dynamic system will have a number of moving parts. For example, you might look at the previous spin data to decide what to bet on. Then you might use future spin results to determine the amount you bet by using multiple progressions or funnels as we like to call them. There are a wide variety of options between these points, and at what point a system moves from clockwork to dynamic remains arbitrary. For example, there are many variations you could apply to the even money type Martingale bets. Examples include sequence betting, where instead of the bet being fixed on one colour, you vary where you place the bet in a particular sequence. You might reset to the beginning of the sequence the same as you would the progression when you win, or maybe you just reset the progression but continue on with the sequence. You could do this with the odd and even bets, or the low and high bets, and you can do similar with the dozens and columns. You could go crazy and mix up the same size bets. However, variance bets are still clockwork bets. All you've done is added an extra cog or two. Mirroring is another option. Before you place a bet, look at the last 10 spins. You are assuming the colours are unlikely to repeat in the exact same order, so you bet on the opposite outcome. Is that a dynamic system? Well, let's say it's a step in the right direction. There are many similar ideas and variations like this you can use. However, as we've often said, large bets are not a good idea. We have only been using these as examples. There is another category of system we have researched beyond clockwork and dynamic systems, and that is random systems. This is another area of countless methods. So just for example, consider you are playing line bets or sixes. For the line bets, you could literally roll a dice to choose a line to bet on. Or you could roll the dice for each progression level you play, giving complete randomness to your bet. Another example would be to create a list of unique random numbers and bet on those. You can use the list to choose a set to bet on, or use the list alongside your progression, changing your bet on every level. You can see clockwork systems and random systems are at the opposite ends of our scale, with dynamic systems in the middle. We can reveal that the simplest of clockwork systems and the most random of systems are actually the least effective betting methods. If you are following our Do Casinos Cheat series, you will find in the later episodes we introduce some random bets into the mix, then you will be able to see how they compare with clockwork systems. Well, that's some terminology explained. It's about time we dive into geometric loss levels to find out just how useful they are to our understanding of roulette systems and predicting results. So, there is a surprisingly simple calculation you can do to understand and predict the loss levels you are likely to encounter for a particular size set of pockets or roulette bet over a given number of spins. Start with the bet size or number of pockets and divide by the total number of pockets to calculate the win rate for that bet size. Then we look at the number of spins we are interested in. Let's keep it simple for now with 100 spins. Spins multiplied by the win rate will tell you how many times you are likely to win in 100 spins. OK, I'm sure everyone has done similar calculations to this before. Let's tidy up the screen. Now we know how many wins we are likely to receive in 100 spins, we can calculate what loss levels we might see on that journey. If you think about it logically while looking at the win rate, then for each win you observe, you have about 48.6% chance of seeing a repeat win. So, in the case of 18 pockets over 100 spins, we can expect about 23 repeat wins. If we subtract the 23 wins from the 48 expected wins, that leaves us about 25 expected wins unaccounted for. If we take those 25 unaccounted for expected wins and repeat the process, we can calculate how many wins we can expect to get after one loss. You can keep repeating this calculation for as many levels as you wish. This is probably easier to explain using a spreadsheet with real data from a roulette tracker. Let's start by looking at an example of the type of data we will be tracking and where it comes from. Then we are going to build a simple spreadsheet to explain the geometric data concept better. This is the simulator we introduced in Dew Casino's Cheat Episode 3. We have loaded up the 100 spins we played from the first episode of the series. Let's play the first spin so the screen updates and we can explain it a bit better. There we go. We are picking on red and black again for now, as they are the easiest bets to get the demonstration underway. You can see black 22 wins first. The data we are interested in is the loss sequence. The top row of data belongs to red, and the bottom is for black. And as you can see, it already has a zero loss recorded as it won straight away. Let's put another spin in. Okay, black 10 wins. 
so there is another zero added to the black loss sequence, and we can see red is currently at loss level 2. We can see up here the next pocket to win is 23, which is a red, so let's run that one. You can see red gets a loss level of 2 added to its sequence, and over here black is now at loss level 1. Let's run a few more. Wow, black is doing well. Let's keep going until the next red win, which we can see will be red 5. We can see red is at loss level 8, but that's okay, we know red 5 is next. And there you go, red gets a loss level of 8 recorded in its sequence. So, let's jump to the end of the data. Now you can see all of the loss levels that occurred in the 100 spins. As you can see, the data isn't much use to us in a format like this. We will take the red results and paste them into a counter. What we are interested in is how many zeros there were, how many twos, how many fours, etc. Let's copy that into Notepad for now, and we will do the same for black. OK, we will come back to that data later. Right, we're going to show you how to build a simple geometric loss calculator. Follow along if you want to build this, or fast forward three minutes if you just want to see our demonstration. We will start by dragging columns B, C and D out a bit. In B2 type spins, we need to set all of our cell text to be right aligned. In B4 type total pockets. In B5 type target pockets. In B7 just type the percentage sign. In B9 type wins expected. In B12 type loss level. In B13 we type 0 and in B14 we put a 1. Select those last two cells and drag down to row 53 which gives us space for 40 results. We are going to select cells C2, C4 and C5 and change their fill colour to light green. These are our only input cells. In C6 we type win rate. In D6 we type loss rate. We're going to need some data in our green cells. Let's start with 1000 spins. We have 37 pockets for our European wheel of course and we're going to target 18 pockets. In C7 we need a formula for the win rate which is C5 divided by C4. So it's the number of target pockets divided by the total number of pockets. The loss rate is the remaining percentage after the win rate, so we simply use 1 minus the win rate which is the values in C7. Let's jump to F6 and type multiplier. In the cell underneath we need the formula plus D7 divided by C7, we will talk about what this value does later. Ok, that's looking good so far. Next to wins expected, we need to put the formula plus C2, which is the spins, and multiply them by the win rate in C7. As you might expect with a 0.486 multiplier, or 48.6% if you prefer, on a thousand spins we get just over 486 expected wins. In C12, let's type expected, and in D12 type remaining. Under expected in cell C13, we need the following formula. In the adjacent cell D13, we need to put this formula. Those formulas only work for the first row, so we need slightly different formulas in the cells below. In C14, type the following formula. In D14, use this formula. Now select those cells and drag them down. It looks like we have some formatting issues. Some of the really small values are showing up in scientific notation. Let's change that by selecting all of the result cells and right-clicking on them. Choose Format Cells, then select Number. There, that looks better. In C55, we can use the autosum function, or use this formula to add up the values in the expected column, which of course should match the value in C9. And that's all you need to calculate geometric loss levels. Let's bring back the data we looked at earlier, from the 100 spins we run through our simulator. We will need to change the number of spins at the top of our spreadsheet to 100 to match the data. Let's drag the red results nearer to the expectations, so it's easier to compare them. You can see our expectations and our actual results from real roulette spins we used are not far off. Let's do the same with the black results. Like in any roulette session you play, there is always some variance in the results compared to the expectation, and if you watched our Hidden Patterns video, you will probably remember we used the outliers in the data to decide where to bet. It's the variance from expectation that gives us the ability to make predictions of what is likely to happen. The accuracy, however, varies depending on the number of pockets you are monitoring and the number of spins you are considering. We realise this video is a bit long, so well done for making it this far. We did say it would be a bit tedious. However, we made some promises that we intend to deliver on. So grab a coffee, it's about to get interesting.
we just looked at the count of loss levels for a couple of sets of 18 pocket bets, over 100 spins, that clearly showed some correlation to our geometric loss level calculator. Let's do another similar example with a smaller bet size this time to make sure that wasn't a fluke, and perhaps see if there is anything else we can learn. We have loaded up the simulator again. This time we're going to look at the scattered four pocket bet we have been playing in the Do Casinos Cheat Series 1 videos. So here is the results for the 100 spins from session 1. Obviously with a four pocket bet, there will be a lot less wins than the red and black bets gave us. Let's grab the data anyway, and we will do this for all four episodes we have published so far. We load the second session and run it to the end of the 100 spins, collecting the results and adding them to the first session. Now we do the same for the third session. Oh look, do you remember in session 3 we had 5 wins in a row? Well here they are. A win at level 3 followed by another 4 wins shown by the 0 loss levels. Right, we just need the results from session 4. Here we are. Let's add them in, and then copy all of the results into the clipboard so we can paste them into the counter. As you might expect with a smaller bet, the results are a bit more spaced out. We will grab these results and take them over to the spreadsheet like we did before. Let's change the spins to 400 and the target pockets to 4 so it matches the data we have just collected and bring the results a bit nearer to our expected column. You might be thinking, some of those near the top are reasonably close, but how do you explain all of those further down? Let's draw a line between expectations greater than 1 and less than 1. Then we will select all of the expected results below the line. If we select the values in the expected column, you can see Excel adds the values up for you and is showing a total of 8.32. However, in this case, the wins expected and the total at the bottom no longer match, so we know there are more results than our list is showing. We could extend the list, or we can simply look at the previous row in the remaining column to get the correct value, which is 8.72. So, the calculator is saying at 400 spins, there should be almost 9 results below the line, and we actually have 10, so that's not bad. You can, of course, compare the expectation with the actual for any range, like the first 10 levels here, add up to 29.47 with an actual of 29. And the above-the-line results are similar. When you consider the loss sequence results came from 4 separate sessions of 100 spins, it's hard not to be impressed with the accuracy of this simple calculator. We can see it's great for analysing past results, but what can it tell us about the future? Let's tick off the items on our list by running through some more examples. Let's go back to the 24 pocket Mitchell Gale example and evaluate both the system and strategy using our new calculator. First, you need to know roughly how many spins you might play a system for during a session, but more importantly, how many spins you need to play the system for if it is involved in a strategy. Before we move on, let's consider what a profitable system or strategy really is. To be classed as profitable in the standalone sense, a system would need to return 100% profit for over half the sessions you play it, or the system will need to be part of an effective strategy. Mitchell's system and strategy are the opposite end of this, based on a small return percentage and requiring a 100% win rate. Let's consider a different example for a minute. Say you play a system with a starting balance of £100 and you end your session with a £25 profit. Can you class that as a profitable system? Absolutely not. With a 25% win ratio, you would need to play the system over a course of sessions with a strategy dictating a minimum win rate of 5 in every 6 sessions you play. Let's look at that in more detail. Assuming you are only playing one system and you don't have a stop loss, of course, there isn't much point having a stop loss if you are playing a single system. Instead, you should reduce your stake to be the stop loss, removing the temptation of overbetting. Realistically, stop losses only add value if you are playing multiple bets as part of a strategy. Each bet line or system in a strategy should have its own maximum progression level, or stop loss, allowing for multiple profitable bets to support your goal while protecting you from the occasional rogue bet. Although we are going way off topic here, in the example of a single system being played until you reach a 25% return, winning only 3 out of 4 times on average will result in a gradual decline of net worth. Winning 4 out of every 5 sessions will maintain your net worth, but why would you bother? So, winning 5 out of 6 sessions is the absolute minimum before you can call that system profitable. You could say that particular strategy has a failure tolerance of 1 session in 6, 
Mitchell's strategy has a zero failure tolerance over 312 sessions due to his reliance on a continuous compounding method. You might think we are against compounding, far from it, but we will have to save that topic for a video on effective roulette strategies. Let's continue evaluating the Mitchell Gale system from a different perspective. We know we have already shown it cannot work, but it's a profound example and will help to demonstrate the geometric data calculator. As the strategy is based over 312 sessions with an ever-increasing profit target, it's difficult to calculate the number of spins you might realistically have to play. The best answer we could come up with was starting with 10 spins per day and increasing the spin count by 2 spins per day. This gave us what is probably still a conservative estimate at around 100,000 spins, but let's be super generous to Mitchell's strategy and call it 50,000. Remember though, there is a zero loss tolerance for this strategy, lose just once and you are back to day one. Any profit you made is lost as well as your original $100. To use the calculator to evaluate a system or strategy, you simply change the number of spins you are considering and set the number of pockets you are covering. We will just bring in a 24 pocket progression. You will notice loss levels get counted from zero, but bet levels start at one, because of course, if you place a first level bet and it wins, there was no loss. We already know from the last example that the values in the remaining column refer to the expected number of results you will get in the rows below. We can add an additional column in now that will tell us how many spins on average it will take to see a specific loss level. To do this, we simply take the number of spins in C2 and divide them by the remaining value from the previous row. If we stretch the column out a bit, you can see the numbers get crazy big. However, you might recall if you watched the Hidden Patterns Part 2 video, there are some astronomical numbers involved with roulette calculations. We are also going to expand the expected and remaining columns and set them to 10 decimal places. This is often the level of precision we work to within the realm of roulette. This looks really messy, and of course at 24 pockets it's an extreme case, but it's easier to understand for a first example. The calculator is saying you will have to place a level 6 bet or above every 288 spins, or a level 7 bet or above every 819 spins on average and so on. Remember, these are just averages you might see 400 spins before you need to place a level six bet, or you could run into it within the first few rounds. Whatever happens, it's fair to say other than giving Mrs. RP money to go shopping with, a 24 pocket progression bet is one of the quickest routes to ruin known to man. We are sure it's obvious by now that you will either deplete your stake in a few hundred spins or hit a table limit within a few thousand. The Mitchell Gale or Tripling Gale progression is like the Martingale progression, but worse. And similar to most systems you see online, any system intended to be played on a fixed set of pockets and the process repeated when you win are classic clockwork bets. Classic clockwork bets will always fail. It's just a matter of when. The casinos don't mind when, they are playing the long game. Some people use a get in get out approach where they win little and often, playing for just a few spins per session, but you cannot escape probability. We have already shown how results accumulate across sessions. All clockwork bets will eventually lose. When they do, you will lose more money than you have previously made. Let's look at a few examples of why we lose more than we win when the inevitable happens. It doesn't matter if you set a stop loss, restrict your stake, or encounter a table limit. The following outcome examples are similar for any size of bet. If we take a stop loss of five levels for the Mitchell Gale example, we can use the average spins from the row below to give ourselves a remainder of one here. Let's assume a perfect world where we get all of our above the line expected wins before we get a result beyond our stop loss. You can see at this point, we would expect 185.21 wins of 2.5 chips, which is 464.5 chips profit, but just one loss over the line would lose 605 chips. Let's do a similar example with the Martingale 18 pocket bet. Here we can see for a level seven out of scope progression, you would lose 127 chips for an expected win of 105. For another example, let's see if we can use the calculator to understand why the channel in the earlier example said you will definitely lose using the Fibonacci progression. We will also look at a million spins. The Fibonacci progression is different from the previous examples in the sense that the amount of profit varies depending at what bet level you win on, so we have to take each row into account separately. We have extrapolated the expected wins with the various profits into an extra column. It doesn't matter where you put the line, but let's say we will allow for 14 progression levels. If we add up all the expected win values, 
we get about 1.15 million. Thank you very much, that's nice. However, we have to consider the 1,340 losses of £986 we will lose, which comes to over 1.3 million. And that really isn't so good. OK, I think we get the idea. Let's go back a bit. For completeness, let's just add in a value for the top line of the average spins. As there is no value above in the remaining column, we can use the wins expected value from C9. It doesn't matter how many spins you are considering, the relationship between the average spins and the specific bet level for a given bet size will always remain the same. Let's show that by changing the spins. The averages remain the same. Let's change the pockets to 4. Now you can see a dramatic change to the average spins in relation to the bet levels. Let's get rid of the 24 pocket progression and extend the bet levels. Hopefully, you already know how to generate a progression for various size bets. If not, then please watch our How to Use the Roulette Professional Progression Calculator video. Let's say you were going to play the four pocket scattered bets we've been playing in the DCC series, using a progression with a maximum of 20 levels. You could track geometric loss level data in real time to indicate if your bet is likely to fail or not. In this example, we can see loss levels over 20 should occur every 102 spins. We have four losses over 20 in 400 spins, so the set being monitored is in line with expectation. In a live game, it would be easier to see a graphical representation of the data, so we could add in a column for the actuals and a chart to show the results. To make reliable predictions, we are looking for outliers in the data. If your chart looked like this, it would tell you your bet is likely to fail, as you can expect some losses over level 20 to occur soon. But if your chart looks more like this, then you are likely to get a number of wins within the scope of your progression as the results try and conform to expectation. That data is of course from our Do Casinos Cheat series, and we have another 6 sessions or 600 spins still to play. If we increase the spin count, you can get a good idea of the results we are expecting to see in the rest of the series. We will include this view in the future episodes so you can follow the progress if you want to. The point we are making here is, if clockwork bets fail because the loss values are always more than the wins, then we need to make sure we only bet when we have a better than average chance of winning. We can use the data generated by the game to assist us in placing bets, turning our clockwork systems into dynamic responsive systems. So, to evaluate the merits of a betting system, you need to understand how many sessions or spins you need to play it for. Create a progression for the size of bet you are evaluating to see how many levels you can afford to play, considering your available stake or table limits. Use the calculator to understand your chance of success. To understand when systems are likely to fail, plot the loss level data for your bets in real time. Pause the bet when failure is likely and resume betting when the results are favourable. Let's look at a couple more examples and talk about designing systems. As we said at the beginning of the video, success is failure turned inside out. We have spent a lot of time on the Mitchell Gale example for a good reason. Although an in-depth look at effective strategies is outside the scope of today's video, you have to keep them in mind when designing systems. The Mitchell Gale strategy uses a single clockwork system, utilizing large bets with small returns. There is a zero loss tolerance. The small percentage returns means a large stake is required to make any real profit, and you don't get to bank any winnings for nearly a year. Turn that inside out, and we're looking for a strategy encompassing multiple dynamic systems based on small bets with large returns, some tolerance towards failure, using small stakes to return high percentages, and having weekly profit goals where you bank your profits. Earlier, we saw there is a dramatic difference in the average spins it takes to reach a certain loss level or bet level for different size bets. We have created a reference table for each bet size, so it's easier to compare them side by side. You can see we have limited the results to 11 digits to the left of the decimal point for each bet size, which includes all values under 100 billion spins. Those of you that think I'm never going to play a million spins would be better off thinking, I'm never going to play 100 billion spins. We will show you why in a minute. As we scroll to the left towards the smaller bets, you can see we need more rows to accommodate the smaller bet sizes. By the time we get to a single pocket, we need almost 800 rows to include the 100 billion spins. If we zoom out of Excel, you can get a better idea of how the results table looks. So why do we need this table? 
We touched on the subject in the Devil Controls Roulette video when we looked at total loss values and stated they are unlikely to go beyond 2,200. Roulette results are supposed to be infinite, but like the insights provided by total loss levels, this table is another look at boundaries that roulette results never seem to breach. You may recall at the end of the funneling video, we put up a list showing what we considered to be high risk, medium risk and low risk bets. Well, this table is the detail behind those claims. It's been recorded that either red or black reached a loss level of 32 in a casino once, which might sound like an extreme case, but it's quite often a set of 18 pockets can reach that level, although most of the time we don't notice. If you remember back in the Hidden Patterns Part 2 video, we used combinatorics to establish there are over 17 billion ways to make a set of 18 pockets from 37 numbers. As there are only six standard 18 pocket bets on a roulette table, it's rare to see them reach 32 loss levels. As you can see for any specific set of 18 pockets, it should only happen once in about 1.9 billion spins. But let's bring back our tracker so you can see how true this is. We have various data sets we use for testing. The two examples we're going to show you are from 40 sessions of a thousand simulated spins. We have selected the two most extreme results we could find to use as examples. This example is looking at a session at spin 195 and the pocket results are shown in the most delayed order or sleepiest pockets at the top if you prefer. You can see our TLV is just over 2,000, which is very high. If we count down 12 rows in the loss column, you can see the loss level is 52 for the 12 sleepiest pockets. At 18 pockets, the loss level is 30. We can see at 24 pockets, we have a loss level of 20. You can see even with the sleepiest of pockets creating the worst possible results for a random set of pockets, the results still fall within the boundaries of this table. In our second example, we look at the opposite end of the scale, with our total loss level just over 900. Even with a low TLV, there are 24 pockets at loss level 14, 18 pockets at loss level 23, and 12 pockets with a loss level of 29. Let's look at the results from both examples at the same time. As you might expect when the TLV is low, any bets you place are likely to win at lower loss levels. When the TLV is high, bets are more likely to lose for longer and go beyond the scope of your progression. You can see the smaller the bet, the wider that gap becomes. With smaller bets, you can play for more levels and more importantly, your return will be higher. Hopefully by now, you have the ability to calculate progressions to decide on the size of bet and how many levels you can play for, as well as calculate the stake you will need if you are going to play multiple smaller bets. You should be able to track loss levels and TLV data for the bets you're interested in. You can then use the TLV data to decide if your progressions are likely to run long or short, and using the geometric calculator to decide if your bets are in front or behind expectation. This is an example of using the data that is generated throughout the session to help you make dynamic decisions. We saw earlier the reasons why clockwork systems will always fail. We know the Excel tools available to do all of this are not easy to use. We are developing a simplified version of our tracker seen in the examples to put on our website that will process everything in real time for you. We ended up leaving out a lot of material that we had planned for this video, so there will be more to follow about designing systems and strategies. If anyone is actually still watching, we will be surprised, so please type surprise in the comments below just for fun. We hope you love geometric data as much as we do. See you next time.